heart is really an amazing muscle. Taking deoxygenated blood from our body to the right side, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, dropping it off at the lungs. Left lung would be here. Right lung would be here. Oxygenating that blood and then bringing it back to the left atrium from the right side. These are right pulmonary veins. From the left side, these are left pulmonary veins. Bring it into the left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta. Really an amazing muscle. But it's just that. It's a muscle. And this is an important point because the blood flowing through these chambers on the right side is deoxygenated blood. It's oxygen poor. On the left side, it's oxygen rich. But if it's a muscle, just like any muscle in your body, it's going to have an oxygen demand. And this right side cannot be starved for oxygen. So what does that lead us into? Something called coronary circulation. Coronary circulation is just that. Coronary, meaning heart. Circulation, of course, the flow of blood. So when we look at the pattern of blood flow around this in coronary circulation, we're looking at all these blood vessels that are surrounding this muscle tissue that I'm holding. So where should we start? Well, if we open this up, it'd be nice if we could open this up. Here we go. If we open this up at the base of the aorta right here, you'll remember I told you the blood flow comes up like this, aortic arch, and then we hit brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, left subclavian, okay? And we start to feed the rest of the body from there. But if you look at the base of the aorta, on the right side, and tucked underneath this pulmonary trunk on the left side, right side and left side respectively, these are the right coronary artery, you can probably imagine this one coming down like this. And the left coronary artery, you can imagine this one coming. It's actually going to do something interesting and split, but it's going to come and start to feed around here. So this is actually where we start right here. There's ostia that open up, and again, blood flow can come out both of these tubes here. Now, if we slide this back into place, we'll start right here on the right-hand side. What we're going to do basically is deliver oxygen rich blood to all of this muscle tissue. And then we're going to pick up that oxygen poor blood and we're going to bring it back to this chamber right here. But let's start at this point right here. The right coronary artery. Right coronary artery comes down the right side, right down the right side. And as I'm showing you right side, left side, think of this as the margin the right margin, like the margin on a piece of paper. That's your right marginal artery in red right there. Right marginal artery comes and feeds this right side. That right coronary artery comes around like this and feeds into the posterior interventricular artery. Posterior, because we're on the back side, interventricular, we're in between the two ventricles, posterior interventricular artery. So we've essentially fed the right front side and back of the heart. The left coronary artery, again remember, we're talking about this one right there, poking out under the pulmonary trunk there. The left coronary artery is going to split. Right underneath here it splits, okay, it like breaks into two. And it becomes the anterior interventricular artery anterior front side interventricular in between the two ventricles anterior interventricular artery is this big red one here also called the lad left anterior descending comes all the way down like this the other split it makes is into something called the circumflex circumflex like circumference think of circumference of a circle okay you're going around the circle the circumflex artery is this red one that wraps around here. And this one also branches off into the left marginal arterial branch because we are on the right side, left side, left margin. Again, think of the margin on a piece of paper. The left marginal artery right here. 
And that circumflex continues all the way around and also would meet up with this posterior interventricular artery on the back side. So we have now essentially fed the front and left side and back of the heart. Now, everywhere that we bring blood to, we have to bring blood back from. So what does that mean? Well, way out here at the capillary beds are where we're going to see the gas exchange, but we've got to bring that blood back. So from the front side, follow this blue one, this giant blue one, we call it the great cardiac vein. Great cardiac vein comes around like this. Great cardiac vein continues all the way to this point right here. In fact, we still call this the great cardiac vein. Even the posterior cardiac vein in blue here, posterior cardiac vein comes and merges with this as well. And we go to this point right here, we call it the coronary sinus. On the right side, you cannot see it, okay, which will actually help you remember, we call it the small cardiac vein. Small cardiac vein would be the blue one that runs down like this. Small cardiac vein would come all the way around like this. So great cardiac vein from the anterior side, posterior cardiac vein. We have the great cardiac vein again continuing. We have the middle cardiac vein on the posterior side, middle cardiac vein, small cardiac vein is going to come like this. They're all going to go to this spot right here, the coronary sinus. In the coronary sinus, when I open this up one last time, today hopefully, we open up right here to this spot. This is the opening of the coronary sinus, that dark, dark red spot right there. Okay, and what that is, is deoxygenated blood from all of this muscle that you saw here. All, because the working muscle, all that deoxygenated blood is going to come into this opening of the coronary sinus because this is the right atrium. Remember, superior vena cava draining the top side of the body. I'll put my pointer through the inferior vena cava on the bottom side of the body. And here we have another opening. So one, two, here's our third one, the opening of the coronary sinus. Deoxygenated blood is now in the right atrium. And remember, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk to the lungs, left atrium, left ventricle, aorta out to the rest of the body. One more thing I'd like to point out while I have this open is this structure right here. This little white oval that you see there, we call it the fossa ovalis. Fossa is a shallow depression, ovalis because it's oval shaped. The fossa ovalis was once open in you and I when we were developing as a fetus in our mother's womb. But it has since closed off and it causes a little scar tissue to grow and it separates the hearts. This is why we have a right side of the heart that carries deoxygenated blood through these chambers and a left side of the heart that carries oxygenated blood through these chambers. That's not necessarily the case in fetal circulation, which you'll see in another video.